An aircraft carrier serves as the centerpiece of the U.S. Navy's fleet. Here it is, the USS Flag aircraft carrier. Imagine being on the deck of this aircraft carrier. These massive ships are like floating airports, complete with fighter jets, helicopters, and all the supplies that are necessary to At 7 feet 4 inches long, the USS Flag from 1985 is the largest toy ever produced. And it's arguably the single biggest grail for G.I. Joe ever. Now, about a year ago, I got an updated, custom, 3D printed mast for my flag, and I finally got around to um, getting it all put together. So, let's get into it. So what we're gonna look at here is something I kind of showed in my fourth part of my Joe Room Tour videos. And this is a custom 3D printed updated mast for a USS flag. This is the bottom piece. You can see the ladder rungs have been added to it. It's got a crow's nest. And you can see there's spots for little attachments to plug in. It's got some grating for, you know, feet, things like that. A lot of good detail in this. More grating. Spots for more accessories to plug in. And the cool thing about this mast is it's really plug and play. So you just kind of made it together like that. And then what happens is, get this little bag of accessories. Now there's eight pieces in here in total. Doubles of four specific pieces. So there's a lot of doubles. But what you can do is just kind of mix and match them. This piece specifically right here, now this is where, this is the male end that plugs in like this. But what you can also do, if you want to get crazy, plug it into the top. Or you can put a flag in the top, like an actual flag in the top of your flag. What I have to go with this is I have these, they're kind of mast lights and they're specifically designed to slide onto the mast of your USS flag. You see that side is closed, but this side's open. So on the original flag mast, they're supposed to slide right in like that. And these lights, pretty simple construction. Just an open base, open top, and it holds three of these little batteries. You just put the batteries in, and then there's this little rubber piece, and it holds the top and the bottom together, and then when you want to light it up, you just twist it. And then when you want to turn it off, you just twist it the other way. And this little rubber gasket keeps the top from coming off and the batteries from falling out. But I know a certain guy who left these lit up on his flag for too long and uh, now they won't light up, but they're just red lights. And I was thinking about where I want to add these. I might put them here, depending on what it looks like. You know, there's a lot of different options for what I can do. I might just go with one on the very top and then put the other one somewhere else on the top of the superstructure of my flag. But you get a lot of leeway to customize this however you want. Granted, you don't want one of these arrays covering all of your crow's nests because you can stand a figure in there probably put shipwreck up there sleeping <laughs> but it's pretty fun and uh, the first thing we have to do with this is we have to scuff it 
No, I'm gonna scuff it with 220 sandpaper just so I can get some grit on there where the paint will adhere. And the, the fun thing about a custom, you can paint this whatever color you want. You don't even need to paint it. It's already some form of gray, but everyone knows me and the customs, big fan of spray paint. And I'm gonna use a charcoal gray because it's pretty close to the original dark gray on the mast. And uh, then we're just gonna go from there. We're gonna have fun with it. Custom should be fun, right? Toys should be fun no matter what, no matter what you're doing, just enjoy it. So yeah, I really enjoy this updated mast and I'll keep my old mast. I'll put it in a drawer like I do all the other stuff that I need to ensure stays safe and sound. And you know, I'll paint this up. This is a little fire extinguisher molded on here and I'll paint the rung so it won't just be hit it with spray paint and then we're done. Like I'll, I'll put accents, you know, I'll scuff up the railing. But uh, I just thought this would be a fun little project to work on since I've had this for, geez, I don't even know how long. I want to say since Joe Fest last year, right around Joe Fest last year. But yeah, so we're just going to play with this and we're just going to have some fun because it should be fun. And um, I'll just mess around with it and then we'll go from there. Okay, so the original mast has been removed from my USS flag. The new 3D printed mast has been painted and it's all dried and cured up. And you can see that color is a pretty solid match. And it is a custom, so I'm gonna put my kind of spin on this, but at the same time, I want it to blend. I don't want it to stick out and just be kind of an eyesore maybe, but um, I want it to feel like it belongs on that flag. And when we put these pieces together, you can see the height. It's just a little bit taller than the original, only because the original has two levels and the updated has three because of the crow's nest and the ladder. And then we're just gonna get that out of the way. And then from here, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a couple of paint pens, nothing crazy. And I'll just do a couple little accents on here. You know, I'll do the fire extinguisher and a few other parts that I think should have color. Little bit of pop, nothing crazy, but just a little pop. And we'll just add a little bit of accent to it. And then I'll start putting all the arrays on the top. Now I did decide that some of them, I'm gonna leave different colors of gray because I'll have three different colors. It's kind of hard to tell with the lighting, but these are actually different colors of gray. I'll have three different colors on the, you know, quote unquote Christmas tree of the, the mast antenna array. Just to give it a little bit of pop, again, nothing crazy, but I just want it to stand out as custom and different and updated, but at the same time, not be such an eyesore where it takes that line of sight away from the rest of the USS flag. The good thing about acrylic paints on spray paint is that if you get a little on there, you can always kind of get it off with a Q-tip. And then I can always go back over it with the gray as well because I'm doing smaller detail and that's okay. 
And once again, the chrome marker pen. I'm just gonna do some, some detail with it. But these are invaluable. Just some very fine chrome detail in that circle right there. And I'm gonna go over these grates for the feet. Don't want it to stand out too much, but we want it to stand out. Just like that. Just put some chrome in there. Nothing too crazy. It's almost hard to see it with the shine from the camera on that glossy paint. But it's in there. Paint pens are great for raised surfaces because unless you're really flinging the paint pen around, you're not going to hit the lower surfaces. So anything that's raised up like this, you can get some really good detail in it. Just got to take your time. Take your time and have fun. And if you mess it up, Take some of the spray paint, put it in a bowl, take a brush, touch it up. That's all you gotta do. Just like that. Little chrome accents. Yep, that's it. Little chrome accents, that's all we're doing. Ladder rungs. I've always said you kind of want like a meat on meat contact. So I'm putting the fleshy part of my pinky wherever I can on this mast. And, and it's difficult because I'm trying to hold it and paint it at the same time. So it's going to move, but you want to go meat on meat. So, you know, the fleshiest part of something I can right there and then I just try to stabilize as I go which is interesting because as soon as I move my hand the piece of the mast moves but you kind of have to counter it it's a interesting way of working and I'm also trying to make sure it can be filmed and so certain angles that are easier to paint are not easier for the camera like these couple of lines I'm doing right here. But if I turn it too far, then my angle of attack is all wrong because instead of up and down strokes, I'm doing like an angular stroke. I always find it easier to pull with a paint pen rather than push. And that's just me. Very many ways, doesn't mean that my way is right. It's just what's easiest for me. Just little accents, you can see the bottom two are chrome. Now I'm gonna do the four on the top. Uh, six, actually, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, thank you. <laughs> trying to get crazy on this. Just trying to put accents on it. You can take this sucker and just ding it. I'm gonna put some dings in it. We'll just put dings. Dings. Just in corners, dinging up corners. That's all. A couple little dings, little accents. That's all we're doing. And it doesn't have to be uniform. It can be random. Just wherever you want some dings. Just pop them in there. Thing, the whole 
face of this. Just like that. Because I can. All right, for the most part, our custom updated USS flag mast is done. I did some touch-ups on it. Uh, went over a couple of spots a few more times just to get some added details and uh, just clean up some lines on everything. I did a few little accents on these pieces. Nothing crazy, but uh, you know, just to make make a few little pieces parts stand out and pop a little better and uh, you know you can see just just minor detail work nothing too crazy and I finally got the stupid watch batteries for these lights and now they work but they take six very specific watch batteries and I had to go to three different stores to find six batteries. So all it is, just a couple of watch batteries that just go into this. And I just take the end with the little gasket or grommet or whatever you want to call it on there. I twist it all the way down like this. So I can push the gasket halfway over both sides and then back it off. Oh, so now they're in the off position. I'm going to put these somewhere on my custom flag mast. Not entirely too sure if I'm going to use them both or just one. Again, as I've talked about in other custom videos, I generally have a 70% solution with whatever I'm doing, and then I just kind of feel out that other 30%. So whatever gets me there gets me there. And uh, I'm more about the overall feel and flow of something than saying, no, this is the original idea and I'm sticking with it. So I will adjust all the time as I'm making a custom. I'm going to take this 3D printed tow cable because it's nice and flat on one side where the print bed was. And then I'm going to take a blue and a red sheet of can light gels now this might look familiar because if you watched the joe room tour video on my uss flag you saw that this is the stuff that i use to make windows in certain vehicles and play sets and with this all i did was i took a blue sheet and a red sheet and i'm making flags when I just kind of doubled it over notched it out and they're just gonna sit like this so the USS flag was launched in retail in 1985 I like to put little Easter eggs on my custom builds that I do it's really simple stuff so I cut out the blue and the red then I just take the red like this just fold it in half, get a real good crease on it. Just get a real good crease there. And then the piece that I cut out of the blue one, well, I kept that because I'm going to use it as a template. But I just need to make sure that the flags are remotely the same size. Yeah, they're pretty close. And I just use this as a template like that for the cut that I'm going to make. I just make the cut. That's it. Cut a flag, just like that. Just take this. This is just a bunch of vinyl letter stickers. Get it from Hobby Lobby. My trusty tweezers. Find a number eight. Just 
get it on there. There's really no right or wrong way, because I'm just making something. Take a letter I. I was kind of thinking about going this way with this one, since I went vertically with the other. Why not? Get another letter I. Okay, well that's three of them. Ooh. I want one. Just kind of want it to be relatively straight. There we go. So with that, and the flat end, because it's nice and gritty, we want to take the flat end of that, and then we want to affix our flags, and we'll do it right above the little knots, because then it looks like it's supposed to be there. There you go, 85. We're going to make a flag, and it's going to hang right off of this we'll, we'll get it all attached on there or probably open the top hook it in there it'll drape all the way down okay so we're going to use testers liquid cement for plastic i get really good results with this stuff especially when i'm going plastic on plastic and it's not actually going to melt these can light gels so this stuff works really well we're just going to use that and a couple of clamps we're just gonna clamp it down. I went ahead and I cut a notch out of the hook end of this tow cable because it's going to hook right into here. Right there at that right angle, it'll hook in here and then it's just long enough but once this thing is completely connected and this is hooked in, the bottom end of this hook will sit in one of the grooves on top of the flag superstructure and then it'll have a little positive pressure kind of holding it in there. Not that I really need it because once it's hooked in it can just free hang, but I want it to look like it's connected at both ends. So when it's all together, you'll see how it flows. So let me glue these down now. A few minutes later. Okay, so the flag's all clamped up. We're going to let it set. While it's setting, we're going to put the uh, rest of the mast together. And, you know, it's all plug and play, so it doesn't have to be any kind of specific way. It can turn, it can do all that stuff. I'm not going to I'm not going to lock it down because I want to have some kind of freedom to put somebody in there or kind of figure out what I want to do with the whole crow's nest situation or how I want the top of the superstructure to be angled in relation to the mast or the mast to the superstructure. Then we're just gonna put it together however we want. So we got one on there. Put this little dude on here. So we got those on there. Put this guy here. That. that one, that guy, and maybe we'll put this guy in the top. What do you think? Yeah, I kind of dig that. It looks pretty good. Plus, I still have the lights, so I got to kind of figure out where I want the lights. That's going to change some stuff too. Maybe I'll put a light on the top. I don't know. But I like the way that this was painted to look like a light. Because remember with 82 to 94 Real American Hero stuff, they didn't really have kind of lights like this on play sets. So we're just trying to give it the feel of 
but at the same time, I still have these to make use of one way or the other. And a lot of that's going to come down to once this mast is assembled and on the superstructure of the flag, then from there I can figure out exactly how I want to go about it. The mast is on the flag now and uh, just kind of been turning it around to see how I like it. Now I'm going to put the flags on it and see what that looks like. Okay, so here we go. The mast is up. I have the tow cable with the notch cut out right in on the right angle there. And then it's just sort of notched in and sitting down here on this little piece of the superstructure. And uh, we have our eight flag and our five flag. So 1985 USS flag and there it is. Now I'm gonna play around with the lights a little bit. I'm not too sure if I like this light at the very top or maybe I'll put them somewhere else. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Leave the light up or put this thing back on there. So I actually like this better. I put the lights on either side of the railing of the crow's nest. And I like the lights lower, so I think I'm going to go with that. Let's uh, take a closer look at this. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching uh, this video on my updated custom mast for my USS flag. If you're a subscriber, I want to say thank you very much. And I also want to remind everyone that after a lot of consideration in listening to my subscribers, I finally started a channel membership. And you can find that channel membership right here on this tab on the homepage of my YouTube channel. And I also updated my store as well. And you can find the store right next to the membership tab on the homepage of my channel. Now we know. If you're not a subscriber, Ooh. why not just click the button? Then you'll get notified whenever I release new content. So what do you think about the custom mask for my USS flag? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Let's talk some Joe. But remember, have an awesome day.